Hello, uh, Gordon Henderson here and I posted a few pictures recently of my little ruby board talking to a oldy fashioned serial terminal and uh, somebody said could I see it as a video rather than pictures so here we are I've pointed a camera at the screen which is never going to be great but it's uh, it's going to be okay I think yeah that's a bit straight and I'm uh, going to do something. So the terminal is connected via a serial connection to my PC which is running a program called SOCAT which is a sort of join two things together program and that's then talking to the other serial adapter which goes out to the Ruby board and the Ruby board is running well at the moment it's not running anything because it's about to be rebooted so if I just press enter on the keyboard yeah there we go that's, so that's Ruby Booty. This is the basic operating system that Ruby runs. It's a very simple thing. It's a bit like the Acorn, Moss, Star Commands, so Star Cat, for example, gives us the, uh, the directory. And we can run programs here and we can run a few other things. I thought what I'd do is I would run up BBC Basic. Obviously helps if I can spell it. So how is this is BBC Basic running over a serial terminal. I'm not sure um, many people expect this, but uh, there you go. If I uh, load something, and remembering that this keyboard is slightly the wrong way around. Um, no, get the capitals right. List of seven. There we go. So there's there's a little test program that uh, I wrote some time back, and it runs. There's BBC Basic running in a terminal. Um, oops. Star dot. If I were to uh, see, there's there's the problem. Is that Shift two gives an at symbol. So that's over there. This, that, there's the, the Mandelbrot program that I was using to test a few other things and yeah so there you go there's a Mandelbrot coming out on a serial terminal um, and it kind of does does what you might expect uh, that it might do. I've got to press escape twice to make it go escape through because these serial terminals do all sorts of fancy things with escape square bracket stuff so I want an escape to actually get back right back through to the Ruby board because of the there's a little translation layer that in, interprets things like Aparos, which gives me my command line history and, and editing and so on. I need to press escape twice. Anyway, that's um, that's BBC Basic running over a serial terminal. It just sort of does does what it's supposed to do. If I uh, let me just quickly reboot it. There we go. If I change to a different partition on the SD card, um, there we go. The operating system it, it has enough resemblance to a BBC Micro that it, it's got a whole bunch of built-in commands, and it knows that there's an application loaded there. You can see that it's uh, it says it's basic. If I now run something else, if I go. You can see that that's those are the file attributes that the Acorn MOS would expect. So the L is the load address, the X is the execute address, and S is the size. So that's the so there's a program that loads at um, eight thousand hex, executes eight thousand hex, and the size is just under four thousand. It's just under sixteen kilobytes um, in size. And that's a standard sort of BBC Micro ROM type thing. So. So if I run that, I can just run it with slash bcpl and it loads and it loads up. So we're now inside the, the bcpl system and it gives us, there's a simple command line. We can still access star commands and there's our um, directory listing star dot, although we could write ls, which would then run a bcpl program called ls. And there's a nice sort of sorted and 
columnized version of the uh, the output. I thought I'd very quickly go through and just demonstrate editing a program um, and compiling it just from, from scratch. So your standard hello world program, um, hello world.b, new because the file doesn't exist anymore and y equals 25 to tell the editor that we've got 25 lines. I haven't quite sorted out getting the uh, size of a terminal yet. It knows that the width is 80, that's the default width, but the the number of um, lines, when I'm running it on the, on my desktop, I've got the line set to about 32 lines, but on here, this terminal has got 25 lines. So, a new, um, the editor is written in BCPL, it's nothing special. Um, get get libheader. That's BCPL's equivalent to stidio.h if you're a, a C program. Let's start equal val off because it's going to return a value. Write string hello world. PCPL uses star n, um, C uses backslash n. Result is zero, so that's the, the return value. Yeah, so there we go. So if I hit control x, that should write it out. And control, yeah, control q. The, uh, I just hit the caps lock button, so the caps and controls and controls in a proper place, but I've been using it on a PC keyboard for so long that I forget um, where it is. So there's our, our program. PCL compile hw.b to hw and this will start the BCPL compiler. It takes a few seconds and it's telling me that I've got a legal character somewhere. Let's do, do that and then write it out again. Oh, that looks a little bit better. So the question then is why did my editor add a zero null byte? I'll worry about that later. Anyway, there's, there's the program. So you can see it, it's it's quite usable on a serial terminal. It's a little bit slower. This terminal is running at 19.2 uh, kilobaud. It can go faster, but to go faster it needs to use flow control. So X on, X off or CTS, RTS. And I haven't bothered to implement that at the moment. Um, so, I'll leave you with that, just because we like text mode Mandelbrot's. Grand. See you next time.